All right, hello Calc3, welcome back to another video. In this first video for May 14th, we're going to be covering part one of section 12.5, and the topic we will be covering is lines in space. So in two-dimensional space, to specify a particular line, we need two pieces of information. We need the slope of the line and a point on the line. In three-dimensional space, the information we need to specify which line we're talking about is similar. So we need a point on the line, and then instead of the slope of the line, uh, which doesn't really make any sense in three-dimensional space, instead we're going to require a vector that gives the direction of the line. So as I'm talking through these next few points, you can refer to the diagram that I have taken from the book again. So suppose that we have a line L in space and it's passing through the point P naught and it's parallel to a vector V. So V is the blue vector in the diagram and then you can see P naught is labeled. Then a point, just any point in space P is on the line L if and only if the vector from P naught to P is parallel to our vector V. So that vector from P naught to P is denoted by that big red arrow that's showing up in the diagram. Um, so our point P is on the line if and only if that vector P naught P is parallel to V. But we know that P naught P is parallel with V if and only if P naught P can be written as V times T, where T is just some scalar. And what this tells us is that a point P is on the line L that we're talking about if and only if the vector from P naught to P is equal to T times the vector V for some scalar T. And now let's do a little bit of manipulation with this equation that we've just gotten. So the vector from P naught to P being equal to T times the vector V implies um, that x minus x naught, y minus y naught, z minus z naught is equal to t times the vector v. And this expression with x minus x naught, y minus y naught, and z minus z naught, we get that just from putting the vector p naught p in component form. And now we can rewrite uh, the vector x minus x naught, y minus y naught, z minus z naught, as the difference of the two vectors written here. So the vector x, y, z minus the vector x naught, y naught, z naught. And of course, it's still going to be equal to t times the vector v. And then we can add the vector x naught, y naught, z naught to both sides of our equation. And ultimately, we find that if we have a point p on the line L, then the vector x, y, z is equal to the vector x naught, y naught, z naught, plus t times the vector v, where remember v is the vector parallel to our line, and t is just any scalar. So we can define the vector r of t to be the position vector of a point on the line, and we can let r naught um, be the position vector of p naught. So what do I mean by the position vector of a point? Uh, so if you write your point as some ordered triple x, y, z, then the position vector associated with that point would be the vector x, y, z in component form. And if we take this, uh, this equation that we've just derived up here, and we write it using this new notation, using the vector r and the vector r naught, we get this notation here, or this equation here. So r of t is equal to the vector r naught plus t times the vector v, where t can range anywhere between negative infinity and infinity. So t is any real number. And this leads into uh, the vector equation of a line. So this is something that you're going to want to remember, want to memorize. If we let L be the line through a point P naught, and L is also parallel to the vector V, 
then the vector equation of L is given by R of T is equal to R naught plus T times the vector V. So this is the equation that we just found up here where T ranges anywhere between negative infinity and infinity. And as we said before, R is the position vector of a point on L and R naught is the position vector of P naught. So if we have a point that satisfies this vector equation here, then that point is going to be on our line L. And now we can use this vector equation for the line to find parametric equations for, uh, for the line in space. So we know from before that the point x, y, z is on L if and only if uh, the vector x, y, z is equal to the vector x naught, y naught, z naught, plus t times the vector v1, v2, v3, where here we uh, took the vector v and we wrote it in component form. And again, where t is just some real number between negative infinity and infinity. And now we can combine the vectors on the right side of this equation. So we find that the vector x, y, z is equal to the vector x naught plus t times v1, y naught plus t times v2, and then z naught plus t times v3. And of course, two vectors that are in component form are equal to one another if and only if the components are equal to one another. So this implies that our component x is equal to x naught plus t times v1, y is equal to y naught plus t times v2, and z is equal to z naught plus t times v3 for any t uh, that is a real number. And right from here, we get our parametric equations for a line. So you're definitely going to want to remember the vector equation for a line, and you're going to want to remember these parametric equations for a line as well. So the standard parametrization of the line L through the point P naught and parallel to the vector V is given by the following three parametric equations. We have X is equal to X naught plus T times V1, y is equal to y naught plus t times v2, z is equal to z naught plus t times v3, where t can range anywhere between negative infinity and infinity. Okay, let's move on to a couple of examples where we are finding equations for lines in space. So in our first example here, we want to find uh, the parametric equations for the line that passes through the point P, given by negative 3, 2, negative 3, and the point Q, given by 1, negative 1, 4. So the first thing to notice is that the vector from P to Q is a vector that is parallel to the line, right? Because both the point P and Q are defined to be on the line, or I guess I should say are given to be on the line, in the problem statement. And if we have two points on the line and we make a vector between them, this vector definitely has to be parallel to the line we're talking about. So now we want to find uh, the component form of our vector PQ. And we end up finding that PQ is equal to the vector four minus three and seven in component form. And now we're going to use the point P that was given to us because P is just some arbitrary point on the line. We could also use the point Q if we wanted to, either one would be fine. But remember, we needed a vector that is parallel to the line, which was PQ, and then we need some point on the line. And once we have both of those pieces of information, we can give the standard parametrization of the line. So we do have both of those pieces of information, and just using um, the formulas for the parametric equations that we just derived up here, we find that x is equal to minus 3 plus 4t, uh, where the minus 3 is coming from our point P, and the 4t is given by the 4 that comes from our vector parallel to L, and the same thing can be said about uh, 2 showing up here, minus 3 showing up here, 
minus 3 showing up here and 7 showing up here. We're going to take 2 from the y component of p. We take our negative 3 here from the z component of p. This negative 3 comes from the y component of our vector pq, and the 7 comes from the uh, z components of our vector pq. I guess I should say the j and k components. And in this last example, we, parametr we parametrized the entire line, but we can also just parametrize a line segment as opposed to the whole line. And to do that, we're going to use the same parametrization, except uh, we're going to restrict the values of t so that we shrink down the line that's being traced out as t moves um, from negative infinity to infinity. So now we want to parametrize just the line segment that connects our points P and Q, where P and Q are still the points that we had in the previous example. So we already found the line through the points, um, and that line is given by the following parametric equations, which I have listed here. And again, here we have T ranging between negative infinity and infinity. And our goal is to restrict the values of t so that we're only tracing out the line segment that goes from p to q as opposed to the entire line. So we want to find the value of t uh, where we get the point p on the line, and then we want to find the value of t that gives us the point q on the line. So for p, um, we can just let our the parametric equation that describes x, we can let that equal to minus three because the x component of our point p is equal to minus three. And if we do that, it uh, looks like we get a minus three plus four t is equal to minus three, which of course means that t is going to be equal to zero. So we find that when we let t equal zero in our original parametric equations up here, we get the point P to pop out. Likewise, for Q, we can take our parametric equation for X and set it equal to one because the X component of our point Q is one. And then solving this equation, minus three plus four T is equal to one, we find that T is equal to one. So if we go back to our original parametric equations describing the line, if we plug in one for t, then we will get q to pop out. So the line segment we're interested in, the line segment that begins at p and ends at q, uh, would begin at t equals zero, because t equals zero gives us the point p, and it's going to end at t equals one, since t equals one gives us the point q. So the new parametrization of just the line segment is given by x equals negative 3 plus 4t, y equals 2 minus 3t, and z equals minus 3 plus 7t, but this time t is only going to range from 0 to 1. So these equations stayed the same from the previous example, but we've restricted t so that it's only tracing out the line segment. <laughs> Now let's move on to the last topic uh, for the first half of section 12.5. Let's talk about the distance from a point to a line. So again, as I'm going through these points, it's probably helpful to look at the diagram that I've taken from the book. So say that we have some arbitrary point S in space, and we have a line L that goes through the point P and is parallel to V. So you can find the vector V in the diagram, the point S and the point P. And uh, right away, we can let the angle between the vector from P to S and the vector V be theta. And then using a little bit of trigonometry, we find that the distance, or I should say the shortest distance from our point S to the line L given in red is given by the magnitude of the vector PS times sine of theta, where again, theta is the angle between the vector from P to S and the vector V. 
But remember that the magnitude of the cross product of the vector uh, from P to S and the vector V is equal to the magnitude of our vector PS times the magnitude of the vector V times sine theta. And therefore, the distance from S to L, where L is the line, is given by the magnitude of the cross product of our two vectors divided by the magnitude of the vector V. So V, again, is the vector giving the direction of the line. And this allows us to give the following formula for the distance from a point to a line. So if we're given a point S anywhere in space, and we have a line L through the point P and parallel to the vector V, then the distance from our point S to the line L is given by D equals the magnitude of the cross product between P, S, and V divided by the magnitude of our vector V. Okay, let's move on to the last example where we, in fact, find the distance from a point to a line in space. So we have the point S given by the coordinates 1, 1, 5, and we have the line uh, described with these parametric equations here, where T is ranging from negative infinity to infinity. So first off, we want to consider the fact that we already know a point on L right away, just from the fact that L is described with these three parametric equations. So the point uh, P given by the coordinates 1, 3, 0 is on L um, because we have a 1 popping up for the parametric equation giving x here. We have a 3 popping up for the parametric equation giving y. And although it's not written, we have a 0 popping up here for the parametric equation giving z. And also notice that L is parallel to the vector v given by the component form 1, negative 1, 2. And this is because we have a 1 popping up here, a minus 1 popping up here, and a 2 popping up here. So again, we're just um, applying the standard parametrization of the line that we derived earlier to find this point on L and the vector parallel with L. So once we have these pieces of information, we can find the component form for the vector from P to S. We find that it is uh, the vector 0, minus 2, 5. And now we want to find the cross product of our vector from P to S and the vector V. So we set up this 3 by 3 determinant. And ultimately, we end up calculating the determinant. And we find that P, S cross V is equal to this vector down here in component form. So we have the vector i plus 5j plus 2k. And now we want to find the magnitude of our vector or the cross product of p, s, and v. So we take this vector up here and we find the magnitude. We get the square root of 1 squared plus 5 squared plus 2 squared, which is equal to the square root of 30. We're also interested in finding the magnitude of our vector v. Uh, again, that's going to be the square root of 1 squared plus negative 1 squared plus 2 squared, uh, where, there, where those numbers are just coming from the component form of v given up here. And that ends up being the square root of 6. And now, finally, we have all the information we need to just apply the formula that we just found for the distance from our point S to the line. So the distance is equal to the magnitude of the cross product of P, S, and V divided by the magnitude of V. And we just found both of those quantities. So we end up finding that the distance is equal to the square root of 5. Okay, so that's the end of the material for the first half of section 12.5. Um, I will be uploading the second half of section 12.5 shortly, so stay tuned.